act one, scene two. And these are our actors. I will have them say their names. Uh, Christian. Stacy. Clay. Stephen. Greg. Aaron. Mondi. And up in the booth, we have our lightician for tonight, who is Joy. And Ooh. over there, we have Bryce, who is on music and sound effects for tonight. All these people, as well as acting and being technical, are also improvisers, even the technical stuff. So give them a big hand. Yay. So, welcome. <laughs> so, as I think most of you are aware, this show is uh, a totally new experience in the, in the world of the improv, because mostly we get up here and we make everything up from a few small suggestions, but tonight we're to incorporate the scripted world into our improv world. And the way we're doing that is we have a series of playwrights who agreed to partner with us, and every night we have a new playwright who has given us the first scene of one of their plays. So we are going to be reading the first scene. Oh, actual script. Oh, crazy, what? And then those scripts will sort of drift away, and you'll see that us pick up all of the action and all of those same characters throughout the rest of the evening, okay? So that's what these scripts are here for. I'll pass them out in a moment. The actors have not seen them except for a few moments before you probably saw people reading and looking through. That's the only time they've seen them. Because to ask, ask people to get up and like, I know everything right now, it's really hard. We're better at improvising. So um, to start off, I would like uh, a big welcome for our playwright of tonight, which is Mr. Dan Wilson. Come on, Dan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you know, some, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, 
<laughs> when, I, when I wrote 411, I thought it was pretty much a straight drama, and then people saw it and were just laughing all the way through, like, oh, it's actually absolutely funny. Um, because it's all good improv, it doesn't come from jokes, but from real interactions between people that take you by surprise, um, or are, are droll, or, or witty in some fashion. And people are we're very funny monkeys. Um, and unless you're trying to be overwrought, you will naturally be funny at set sometimes. So, so yeah, so I, I, I do write comedy explicitly, but I, even if in my dramas, you will usually find yourself laughing at various points throughout the show. Cool, cool. So the name of the play tonight, or the scene you've written, um, which will be the play, is Silent City? Silent City. Great. Can you tell us a little bit about this first scene? Now, Dan's an improviser, so he knows not to say, and at the end of the play, everybody gets married. No. That's, that's up to us. So um, in terms of the environment of the first scene, we are in, and this is going to give away the entire genre, a private investigator's office. Ooh. Yeah, so this would be called, which genre? The one. Oh. Thank you. Dim the lights. Dim the lights. <laughs> um, so it's going to be fairly straightforward. You most likely have a desk, a chair, and then a chair in front of that desk. There's probably a file cabinet, probably a bottle of whiskey stash somewhere, who knows. Um, but the basic opening is the office. Great. Great. Okay. Um, is the mood a, a noir sort of mood? And uh, with twists, maybe? Oh, it's definitely got twists. Okay. Um, and just even starting with the opening scene, I try to take some of the tropes of noir uh -huh. um, and have fun with them. Okay. Um, I'm not going to give away what those are, but hopefully as I look at it. But you have certain things that occur in every freaking noir story. And so there's certainly you're poking fun at that, but also while poking, poking fun at it, finding out new things about the characters. So, um, it's so tempting to go into that, but you're about to see it, so I'm not going to. <laughs> no. Well, let's go into the characters, though. Okay. Because, um, we have all of our scripts here with everybody's name. So, um, let's go ahead and come up and grab your scripts. Okay. Hey, hey, you do that. And, um, let's start. Let's see. Um, find out fairly early on, Carol is, has been very frustrated with um, a career that she was unable to follow and has now found herself as a private dick, um, so to speak. Um, so in many ways she falls into the mold, you know, of being the private investigator of a noir story. But I definitely wanted to, you know, give the ladies a chance to play the great hard models kind of characters because they don't really get a chance to. And I like to, to do that. I like to write good roles for women whenever possible. Um, so what is particular about her is that she's deaf. Stone cold deaf. Um, which is going to give you a real challenge um, throughout the story because she often gets what? mistaken for being something else. Um, um, basically, yeah, so definitely the way that she talks brings about a lot of misapprehensions about her abilities okay. who she is. Great. How about Brad Groove? Who is playing Brad? Me. Brad is our male fatale. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brad is basically... Christian's kind of Brad is one, is one who comes in with a case. Um, and, of course, anyone who comes in with a case is, is usually a, is a smoldering... Bashed, you know, bucket of sex appeal. Um, they're probably most likely no good on their own level, um, just from the nature of, of the genre. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about Brad. Great. William. William is Steve. Now, everyone from this point forward, we haven't actually seen the first scene, but okay. they're simply referred to okay. um, in other cases. Should we leave it outside? We can leave, well, I mean, it's always mentioned, I mean, they, they all get ID'd in, in, in the scene. Okay. Pretty much. They're mentioned by name. I tried to make sure that we could, if we didn't see them in the first scene, we at least had an idea that they were in the world somewhere. Right. So I'll leave that to the actual uh, main characters to introduce them as that comes up. Okay. Um, actors, do you have any questions? Well, I would still, I would still love to get your idea of these characters who don't appear yet. Okay. So let's see. Uh, Okay, Peter, if I remember correctly, Peter is um, the... We could have several things going on. Um, Peter is the boyfriend. 
Um, or at least the occasional fuck buddy of um, the lead character. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and so that's all we really know at first about him, is that although I, I do believe that he has a lisp. Okay. I think that may be some oh, of no, Steven. Steven. Oh, Steven has a lisp. <laughs> don't, ever, don't ever trust the playwright. He doesn't <laughs> and that's Aaron. Uh, you're playing Steve. Uh, Steve. Steve. Right. Okay. Right. Um, uh, basically, we, we definitely have uh, Diaz, who is the vocal cop. Who Detective Diaz. Diaz. Yeah, good. Um, you always have to have a hard dose cop who begrudgingly accepts the help of the private investigator. Great. Um, and there's Herr Redding. Herr Redding. Um, he is the German speech pathologist who shares an office with the victim. Um, He's German, his name is Herr Redding. There's really not a whole lot more I can go around. And he's certainly one of the early suspects of the case. Okay, great. Um, I have a couple of uh, uh, technical questions for you. So about the, the pace of the show, you see this sort of typical, like, noir, or sort of mm, mystery taking your time, or is it hard and fast and hard boiled, or kind of a mix of it? It's kind of a mix, because it's def- this one is definitely a comedy. This okay. one is definitely a comic <laughs> noir. So I think that there is a lot of opportunity to definitely be big with the tropes, to really, you know, to be a bit of a ham about, about it. I mean, we've all seen enough noir to kind of know how they move, how they talk, the kind of situations they get into. And feel free to lovingly make fun of that a bit. Um, if a scene requires you to be hot and sultry and smoldering, great. If it needs to be really, you know, grim and dark, great. Really just... But it doesn't have to be us uh, sitting there waiting for you to wait in the fog for 35 minutes. Or <laughs> <laughs> I still got the fog machine. <laughs> cool. Any other questions from actors? No. Yeah, is the scene, is this, did the lights come down when the text is over? Uh, when the text is over, that will be the lighting person's decision. Okay. But mm-hmm. the, uh, how you guys choose to do your scene transitions, I will leave up to you. Your, your it, but this is a, this is a story that takes place in multiple occasions. Oh yes, okay. yeah. I, 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 any good detective crime noir story, our main character will be moving around quite a bit right. from place to okay. place, right. looking for the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. One last thing before we set up and ready to go. <laughs> so this is our philosophical section of the day. So um, when you see great theater, you try to make great theater. What do you think it does? Great. Theater? Great, oh God. Um, I would say that great theater, by and large, leaves you talking afterwards. Great theater, theater, somewhat like that answer. Um, <laughs> it's good to know that when you walk out, you're just, you're just like, talking about the character, talking about the situations that were involved. Um, recently saw a production over at the Burton City Club that was just amazing writing, amazing acting, the directing was tight. I mean, every aspect of it was absolutely brilliant. And my fiance and I were just talking the entire drive home about the issues in the play, but also just how wrapped we were the entire time. She's also an actor, so we're very critical of shows. And you, when we walk out of the show going, oh my god, there was this, and there was this, and then there was this happened, and that was fantastic, that's great theater. So, versus I could end up better. <laughs> <laughs> great. I am so excited. We're really happy to have you here and honor your vision as best we can. However, it comes I really appreciate what you guys do. With this. <laughs>